You are now going to live through a moment of panic in a man's life. This is the man. All you need to know about him, you will know in exactly one minute and 14 seconds. And then, panic. <laughs> What happened to this man could have happened to only one in a million. Barney Dutton, age 40, prosperous stockbroker. Just out of the Birchwood Sanitarium after 10 weeks of a nervous breakdown. The date, April 4th. The time, 6.15 p.m. Barney! Yeah. Come in. How do you feel? Fine. You look like your old self again. Oh, I feel like my old self again. I'm being a little selfish keeping you from your wife, but I wanted to be the first one to see you. Well, then you didn't tell Kit. No, I didn't tell her. I didn't want to spoil your surprise. Oh. Well, uh, how's our business? Great. Sorry that you had to carry the whole load. Look, Barney, we've been partners for 15 years, and this is the first time you ever took any time out at all. Nervous breakdown could happen to anybody. I know, Gil, but ten weeks. Oh, forget it. Here's to your health. I don't know whether I'd better. I, I haven't had one of these in months. Oh, go on. One martini never hurt anybody. You're at home, boy. Live a little. Hello. Oh, yes, do. I'll say that again slower. Get a thousand shares at the market. Right. Oh, I don't know. It ought to open at 80 or better. Right. Okay, I'll confirm it with you in the morning. Okay. Thanks, Stu. You see, we're still doing business, Barney. Didn't hurt a bit, did it? Well, no. As a matter of fact, Gil, when I was away these last few weeks, I had a chance to do some thinking. One of the things I've decided that I was going to be very careful about. <laughs> Gil, what is it? Come. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you knew you didn't take your drink. <laughs> oh, I, I put it back in the mixing glass. Why? <laughs> Poison. <laughs> Poison. You put it there. Gil. Gil. Why did you want to poison me? Barney Dutton's best friend had tried to kill him. His mind raced back. A week. Two weeks. Ten weeks. Groping for a reason. Why? Why? Anyone but not Gil. Not his best friend. Anyone but Gil. Kit? Barney! Hi, darling. What are you doing home? Why didn't you let me know? I, I wanted to surprise you. Do they know you left the sanitarium? Oh, yes. I left around 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? Kit. There's something I've got to tell you. I don't know how to begin. Gil, Gil Beresford is dead. Oh, no. I just left his apartment. He's lying on the floor of the living room. Gil. Barney, what happened? He tried to kill me. Barney. About 20 minutes ago. You 
shouldn't have come home, Barney. You're still sick. No. No, I'm not sick. What are you telling me? That he tried to kill me. I'm not sick. I'm perfectly well. I've been released from the sanitarium. Oh, but Gil wouldn't. He couldn't do a thing like this. Not Gil. But I tell you, he did. With this. Honey. Where did you get this? Gil had this in his pocket. He put it in my drink. I didn't want the martini he gave me. So I poured it back into the mixing glass. And that's how he got it by mistake when he, when he took another one. Gil wouldn't try to kill you. I think I tell you he did. Why do you insist he wouldn't when I say he did? Oh. Kit, I'm not sick. That's all over. Is it? Oh, I don't know what I think. You've got to help me, dear. Hello? Hallelujah. Eddie Lynch. Hello, Eddie. Gil told me you were coming back. When did you drop back here? About six o'clock. Where are you now? Down at the gym. I want to talk to you. I'll be right down. Kit, if you have any idea why Gil did it, you better tell me now. I don't know, Barney. All right. Are you going to call the police? They'll find the body in the morning. Gives me just tonight. What are you going to do? I'm going to find out why. Why Gil tried to kill me. Eddie, we're pretty good friends. We've been together a long time. I want you to tell me about Gil. Tell you what? Well, I've been gone since the 19th of January. Ten weeks. When I left, he was my best friend. I've come home to a man who... who hates me. Why? Did you talk to Kit? Why Kit? Well, she's seen as much of him as anyone. I left her a power of attorney. There were certain papers she had to sign for the firm. Sure. She saw Gil two or three times a week on business. That's more than I see playing golf. When was the last time you saw them? Uh, Wednesday, I think. Day before yesterday. They had lunch at the club. Alone? No, with Stu. Thanks, Eddie. Barney. Hello, Stu. Come on in. It's good to see you, Stu. Well, how are you feeling, Barney? Uh, would you excuse us, Julie, please? Yes, sir. Well, how did they treat you down there? <laughs> Lots of pretty nurses, sirloin steak every night. <laughs> I heard all about them. Please do. Huh? No small talk. I, I'm pretty worried. Worried about what, Barney? What about Gil? Oh? Well, what about Gil? Well, something happened when I was away. I don't know what it was. You had lunch with Kit and Gil Wednesday. Eddie told me. What did you talk about? You feel all right, Barney? Never mind how I feel. 
What did you talk about? Well, you better go on home. Answer me. Barney, you're, you're a pretty sick boy. You, you need a good night's sleep. What did you talk about? I'm not leaving here until I find out. Well, all right. All right, I'll, I'll tell you. We talked about you. Uh, Gil was worried about you still being sick. That, that's what we talked about. Why? Well, because he... Because he thought you might be coming home too soon. Too soon? Gil did never want me to come home. Why did he want me out of the way? Why? Well, he... He didn't think you were ready. He, he, he didn't think you were well enough. I don't believe it. Well, ask Kit. Kit! What's Kit got to do with this? What happened when I was away? Gil was right. You're not ready. You're, you're sick. You're not telling me everything you know. Why did my best friend want to kill me? Why? Barney, you really are sick. It's poison. Give that to me. Yes, sir. I wonder if you'd mind checking the poison register for me. I'm a little concerned. I, I think a friend of mine bought some. Oh? When? Well, I don't know exactly. Sometime this afternoon. What's the name? Gil Beresford. Potassium trionide. Potassium trionide? But not Beresford. Bought at 4.15 this afternoon, seems like. Barney Dutton. Do you know that name? I ought to. It's mine. Barney knew that Gil Beresford had not only tried to kill him, but had carefully planned to make it look like suicide. Eddie Lynch. Stu. He told himself a man can't diabolically plan the murder of his best friend without tipping his hand to someone. Who else? Abby. Abby, Gil's secretary. Abby, there's, there's no nice way of putting this. I left Mrs. Dutton a power of attorney for emergencies. I understand there's been emergencies two or three times a week. He was seeing her that often at any rate. Why are you bringing this to me? Because I... I don't know anyone else to go to. And women have a way of sensing this sort of thing. What do you think, Abby? Well, he... He did see quite a lot of her. When? I... I, I mean... What time of day? Well, in the afternoons, mostly. And occasionally in the evenings? What are you trying to make me say? I'm not trying to make you say anything. I'm trying to find out why he... Abby, I... I'm trying to get to the truth. When, when did you first notice that he worried about me? I can tell you that almost to the day. During the holidays, he was wonderful. Bought us nice presents, and he kidded around a lot at the office party. Yes, I... I remember. But right after the New Year's weekend, well, he was a different person. I thought at first it might just be, you know, too much holiday. But it wasn't. He's never been the same since. Oh, he tries to put up a front now and then, but I can see right through it. Whatever it was, it happened over the New Year's weekend. Uh, thanks, Abby. Thanks very much. Goodbye, Mr. Dutton. The New Year's weekend. 
Between Barney Dutton and New Year's were ten weeks in a different world. It was hard to cut through them, to piece together what happened during those three days. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, he remembered he hadn't gone to the office. He'd had an appointment with the doctor and hadn't seen Gil all day. Sunday. What happened Sunday? Now, just thinking about it, Sunday had a depressing sound. Why? He remembered he had a quarrel with Kit. She'd wanted to go to the New Year's Eve dance at the club. He'd wanted to stay home. He'd given in to her and they'd gone to the dance. With Gil and Gretchen Beresford. The answer was here. He could feel it. Good evening, Mr. Dutton. Nice Hello, to see you again. Uh, Mr. Dutton. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Dutton. The club just closed. I know, will you? But this is very important. Thank you, sir. together, Gil and Kit. That's how it was most of the evening. Gil and Kit together, dancing. Two minutes to midnight. All of the men had found their wives. Where was Kit? He had to find her. Where was she? She wasn't there. midnight. One minute until the new year. Where was Kit? The whistles were blowing. The boys were kissing their wives. The band was playing all Lang Syne. And Gil's wife was sitting here alone. She was crying. She looked at him. She got up. And then she said, Barney, I'm sorry. Something wrong, Mr. Dutton? No, no. William, will you go down to the office and get me Mrs. Barrettford's telephone number? Well, I don't know the number, sir, but she's living at the Berkeley Hotel. Berkeley Hotel? Hmm. Well, isn't she living at the country house? Oh, no. She's been living at the hotel ever since she and Mr. Barrettford separated. Separated? Gil, Gretchen. Quite a while ago, sir. I thought you knew. William. Call her. Say I'll be right over. At this hour? Call her.
me a few drinks. I have the time. Why did you leave him? Huh? Gil, I mean. Oh. Let's not go into that. But I've got to know. I've just been at the club. I was thinking about New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. That's the last night Gil and I were together. But I've got to know what happened. I've got to know why you left him. Oh, relax, Barney. You know, since I'm getting yourself all worked up over something you can't do anything about. But, Gretchen... I have no intention of discussing it with you. Take it up with Gil. I can't take anything up with Gil. He's dead. you left him. Oh, Barney. But I've got to know. He tried to kill me tonight. He put poison in my drink, but got it himself by mistake. He signed my name to the poison register at the drugstore. He tried to make it look like suicide. My best friend in love with my wife. That's what it's got to be. Oh, no, Barney, you're wrong. Well, then it just doesn't make sense. It does make sense. But I've got to take you back a ways. It started New Year's Eve. That's the night Gil confessed to me that he'd stolen $80,000 from your business and lost it in the market. From, from our business? Yes. $80,000. They tried to blame it all on me. Embezzlement, nervous breakdown, suicide. It all adds up. It does make sense. That's what I meant. That'll be cute. I called her. Darling, I was so worried. It's all right, dear. It's all over. What? What did you find out, Barney? Was, was it something awful? No. It was only $80,000. Adventure and excitement. Be sure to be with us for the next episode of Panic! <laughs>